everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. One more time, let's give the Lord great praise in his house this morning. Welcome to church today. Praise you, Lord. Mm, yeah. Come on, men, let's sing this. There's no greater love than Jesus. There's no greater love than He gives. There's no greater love than Jesus. So deep within. Oh, sing it one more time, guys. There's no greater love than Jesus. Oh, yeah. There's no greater love than He gives. There's no greater love than Jesus. So deep with everybody sing it now. There's no greater love than Jesus. Oh no, there's no greater love than He He gives. There's no greater love than Jesus. Oh Lord, so deep with sing it just one more time. There's no greater love than Jesus. And praise. Well, good morning. Oh, smile and say good morning. It's so good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Stratford Heights Church of God. In my opinion, in the opinion of many others, the greatest church in the entire world. It's so good to see you this morning. If you would, just for a moment, be seated. Got a few announcements. I don't want to keep you standing for too long. But I'll get right down to it. I've got something very important to go over with you, so I need your undivided attention. This just in. According to the pie-in-the-face competition, Gary Turner is in first place with $165. <laughs> Way to plant your seed in that ministry. Carolyn is number two with $78, so she's, she's catching up. And then I'm with $66, and everyone else is 53 and 27. So listen, we just need to come unified together and just give to that Gary Turner ministry. Let's be unified. I want to remind you that if you donate the most money, you get to be the blessed one to slam it in his face. So make sure to sign your name on that check and to turn it in, let him know. Uh, he's got a wonderful picture out there. You can put it in there or whoever else you wanted to. But I want to remind you of that. Also, the prayer walk is today as soon as the service is over. Uh, as long as it's not raining, they're going to meet in the back out here in the parking lot towards the back. We're going to get together, going to pray and pray and walk. That's good. Amen. So make sure to check that out. If it is raining, they're just going to meet here in the foyer. So you can uh, hang out there and then get changed, put on them running shoes, and let's get out there and go pray. How many of y'all came this week into the prayer, uh, the 24-hour prayer? Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, make sure to come check it out. Next time, we'll put the big board up there and make sure to sign up for that. And then last, I want to remind you uh, two things. Uh, this Tuesday is going to be a great time in Oasis at 630. Pastor Richard's right over here. They're having See You at the Pole. The, the service is going to be there this Tuesday for that. So if you have a teenager who does not come to youth, you grab them by the ear and you force them there on 630. They'll be so glad they did. And lastly, this Saturday, from 4 p.m. until 9 p.m., we have Fusion Fest. We have a humongous bonfire, cornhole, pumpkin carving. It's going to be a blast. Uh, we got stuff for kids. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun. Uh, the cost is only $5, and uh, we top it off at $10 for a family. There will be stuff for kids, balloons, and uh, there's even going to be a dunk tank. They're going to put me on a dunk tank and throw that ball and try to knock me in the water. Clap all you want, but there's no one good enough in here to hit that sign to knock me in anyway. So make sure you come check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of food. And uh, so make sure you come check it out. If this is your first time, if you would just remain seated. And if you've been coming for more than once, would you stand? 
Go ahead. If, you've, if you're a normal, regular attendee, go ahead and stand. And if you're first time, please stay seated. We want to get out and give you a connection card. So as our greeters come out, we want to make sure to give you one of those connection cards. Please fill that out. We want to thank you for coming today and keep you informed of what goes on here at the church. Now let's get out, shake someone's hands, and welcome to Stratford High's Church of God. This joy that I have. and a jail minister here at the Stratford Heights Church of God. If I have shown you kindness throughout the years, now is your chance to show your kindness to me by stuffing my jar with your donation and for, for this very needy and worthy cause. My motto is, pie in the face for the one who saved me by his grace. Would you stand?
we praise you, Lord. Give him glory. I just couldn't take life anymore. My problems had me bound. Depression weighed me down. But God, he held me close. So I wouldn't let go. God's mercy came. So I wouldn't let you go. Mm, yeah. I almost gave up. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough. I couldn't see. The devil really had me. The devil really had me. Let me tell you, but Jesus came and grabbed me. singing about in the anthem <laughs> he paid the price whatever battle you're going through this morning the victory is already done the answer is done don't let him twist your mind and tell him you're not going to make it God's mercy kept me, so I wouldn't let go. Sing that second. I almost gave up. You're right at the edge of your breakthrough. I was right at the edge of the breakthrough, but couldn't see. The devil says he has you. <laughs> the devil really has you. But Jesus, but Jesus came and grabbed me. This is the air I breathe. <laughs> this is the air I breathe. Your holy presence.
This is my day. Your very word. Your very word. Spoken. Spoken to me. I'm desperate, Lord. king was angry. You remember the story in the word where the three Hebrew children were told that they had to bow. They had to bow to, if you'll give this to me, sickness. They had to bow to the problem of no job. They had to bow to the playground of the world and all the rules and regulations and the new philosophies and new ideas. They were told they had to bow. They said, will not bow. King, no matter what you put us through. And the Bible says that his 
anger turned on them. And he called for his workers to bring them together and cast them into the fiery furnace. I don't know what God has trusted you with, but God trusted the three Hebrew children. He knew that no matter what they did, no matter what they went through, they were going to be all right and that they were going to trust him. Their word to that king was, do what you will, will not bow, will not turn. How many are dedicated like that and committed like that in this house this morning? No matter what, doesn't matter what the enemy throws, doesn't matter what the world throws, doesn't matter what the government throws, don't matter how hot the furnace is. The Bible says, the king's wrath, he told his workers, turn that heat up seven times hotter. So much heat coming out of that that the workers that were responsible for taking care of it and throwing the Hebrew children in, they literally were slain in the heat of it. As those three Hebrew children were cast into that fiery furnace, as they were thrown in, three went down into the fire, and it says they got back up. And I love the scripture that says in Daniel chapter 3, where it reads, and it says, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the firing furnace, being thrown in. But when they stood up, it says, then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished. How many would like the world to be astonished? The king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did we not cast three bound into the midst of that fire? Then the king said, they answered unto the king and said, true, O king. He answered and he said, lo, I see four men loose walking around in that fire, dancing before the Lord Almighty. How many of you know you're not going through it alone this morning? You're not going through it by yourself. He is with you. He promised to go with you all the way. Hallelujah. He's with you. He'll not leave you. He'll not forsake you. He'll go with you into the deepest valley, to the highest mountain, and we're going to walk with you right into the fire if he has to. But the Bible also says in Isaiah, the waters will not overflow you. The rivers will not overrun you. And when the fire, you might walk through the fire, but the Bible says, not only for the three Hebrew children who lived out this truth, but the promise is for you and I, that the flame will not kindle upon you. You will not be burned. I'm telling you, do what they want to, to the child of God. If you stand in confident faith this morning, everything is going to be all right. Say amen. Amen. Come on, give him praise. Give him great praise. Hallelujah. Lord, you're the air that we breathe. Lord, we're lost without you. We're desperate for you, God. Oh, this is what happens when you have 24 hours of prayer. Man, from 8.30, I walked in the building. I, something hit me right in the heart. And I said, oh, Lord, when we get in your presence, man, that's when everything changes. It just sets the groundwork. It sets an atmosphere. Don't you feel him this morning? He's here today in his house. Thank you to all of those who came out over the weekend and supported the 24-hour prayer watch. Man, I'm telling you, if it wasn't for you, the, the Bible says, except the Lord build the house. And how many of you know he builds the house through prayer and through his word and through the sacrifice and obedience of his people? Thank you for being here. Thank you for being dedicated and committed to being here in prayer. Right about, right about 1 o'clock in the morning, I was walking around, scared me to death. I decided I was going to do a Jericho mark outside. And that early morning, there ain't nobody else out there but me and the Lord. And I walked all the way around the building once and came back around the second time, ran into somebody else walking all over here, scared me to death. <laughs> but I was glad to see in the aisles, in the pews, in the rooms, everywhere, people reading out in the sanctuary the Word of God. Thank you for being here for the prayer watch. Thank you, Sandra and James Birchwell, for organizing and running that event for us in our church. Thank you. Several that we're praying for this morning. Right now, even as we speak, Don Pitts is in surgery. They came to him right before the 8.30 service and mentioned to him and told him, Liz called me on the phone, her and Brother Virgil are with them right now. Very serious operation. They said it'll be six hours. They were going to be with him for days. They had said that. And then around 8 o'clock this morning, they told him, I'm sorry, it's probably going to take us about eight hours. 
So he's in surgery right now, even as we are worshiping God. I want us to pray, and I'd like someone, if they will, to come forward and be anointed to pray for Brother Don. Also, Sister Linda Hicks needs our, Linda Pitts needs our prayers. She also suffered some kind of a heart issue this week and had to be hospitalized herself. But so now she's there while her husband's in surgery. I want someone else, maybe a couple, to come forward as representing both of them. As a matter of fact, I'm going to call out Brother and Sister Robinson, if you would, to come and stand for them, Don and Linda Pitts. Also, Anna Oaks is coming forward. Anna has a very serious situation tomorrow. Could be life and death for her. I don't think she'd mind me saying that. And if God don't move and he protect her and keep her, then she could be in a lot of trouble physically. But how many of you know God will be with her through the fire? Anna, I want you to work your way down to the altar this morning. Also, Mary Kirby needs our prayers. Sister Violet Barnett needs our prayers. And also, Sue Brashear was taken to the hospital last night. We want to pray for her. How many of you have a need physically, spiritually, emotionally in your own life? And you lift your hand all over the congregation. Look around at the hands and pray for our brothers and sisters. God bless you. If you feel the need and you want to be laid hands on and anointed and prayed for this morning with an oil that we believe that God will save the sick, then I want you to step out from where you are and come down to this altar. We're going to pray with you and our ministers will pray with you. In the meantime, let's pray. Father, as we come before you, we thank you, Lord, that you're a God who we can trust in, we have confidence in, and know, Lord, that you are the one in your word. You said, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church, anoint them with oil, and pray the prayer of faith, and the prayer will save the sick. So, Lord, we believe in healing. You said in your word that not only did you die on the cross for our sins, but you took stripes upon your back that were for the healing of the nations. And, Lord, so we come to you in the name of Jesus, not in the name of a denomination or a church, but we come in the name of Jesus and ask for healing today for these that are sick, for these that are going through uh, situations and circumstances where they need deliverance. We just pray in the name of the Lord that you'll be with them. Every name we've called, every hand that was lifted up in this sanctuary, Lord, we're believing you for miracles in this house. We've seen it before. You're a miracle-working God. And so, Lord, we come in the name that is above every name. We know that you'll go with us. We know that you're with us now. And, God, we trust you today. Pray that for every need that's represented, your work will be accomplished in their lives. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. I'm desperate for you. And I Touch the Lord as it goes by. You'll find he's not too busy to answer. Too big. 
she was going home with so much bounty 
She thought she'd hit the jackpot when she found Boaz's field. But what she didn't know was that Boaz had sent word to his workers in the field. It said, when little Ruth comes up behind that trailer, drop handfuls on purpose. Drop handfuls on purpose for Ruth. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Ruth. God has sent word to his angels. He sent word to his workers in the field. He sent word to the doctor that's going to be working on your case. He sent word to the folks that's responsible. And he said, drop handfuls on purpose for my Ruth, for my Ruth. From my church. How many believe that? Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody says, you sure do get wound up. Yes, I do. Amen. You know why? Because more than just a ceremony, more than just a religious ritual, I believe in this word. Hallelujah. I believe it's powerful. This word tells me it's powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, cutting asunder even to the very spirit and soul. This powerful word of God will get you through every crisis. It'll help you fall madly in love. It'll help you build a house. It'll help you keep a job. You get into this word and into the Savior of this word, and you're guaranteed one day to live for all of eternity and glory in heaven with the angels of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. One more time, put your hands together and give him praise. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We honor you, God. You may be seated. It's always so good. Terry, it's good to see you in God's house. I tried to come see you the other day, and you were in therapy. It's good to see you. Wonderful to see you here. It's good to see you in the house of God. If you're visiting with us, welcome to a church that believes what we read. We believe in the power of God. We believe that he's able to do anything. The Bible says, what shall be impossible with God? Nothing. Say, look at somebody and say, nothing. Nothing is impossible. I'm not supposed to preach, Brother Chris, you are. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you in just a minute. But first, I'm going to give you three points. No, I'm kidding. Totally kidding. Today we have with us, and I want to recognize him before he even speaks. You know him. He is a missionary from Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Holland, and uh, France, uh, Belgium. He is a missionary over in Eastern Europe there or Western Europe, and he is with us today. We love him. We have been supporting the mission work that he does there in the Benelux for many, many years. And uh, we've been over there. We've seen what he does. We've been in the services. We've been and we've met with pastors seen firsthand what he has done, what blew me away, and I, I don't mind just saying it out loud, I normally wouldn't, but I, I'd say it out loud this morning, of all the missionary projects and all the missionaries that we support, this one's got my heart, the others have part of my heart, this one's got my heart, I believe in what he does, I've been there, I've seen a thousand people who look to him as a prophet, people that look to him for spiritual guidance and training. I've seen the work and I've seen the respect. You know, a lot of times you'll know how someone lives by how well their family treats them. I was able to go and see how the family treats their missionary. They love him. They reverence him and honor him as a servant of God. And we are honored to have you here today. I've been raised my whole life. My mama and my daddy raised us that missionaries were people that were special. They give up their lives. They give up their families, their homeland, their family reunions, their Christmases. They give up their life, and they go to the field for Jesus Christ. I've always thought missionaries were amazing. And yet at the same time, whew, at such a price, I never wanted to be one. But I always had a great respect and a great, great awe of 
those who give their lives to the mission field. It wasn't too many years ago that we shared with Brother Chris as he broke with a broken heart, stood in our pulpit and told us about the death of his wife. We've watched him go through many different things. And yet I've, the amazing thing, he never said, I gotta take a break. I'm gonna come off the field. I'm gonna sit down for a while. He left, if you'll give me this, the cemetery, so to speak, and went right back to the work that God had called him to. So Chris, we love you. We're looking forward to the word that God's given you for us today. And this is your opportunity as well. I want us to bless him. We always give in our offering to World Missions. Today, we'll give to the missionary. And I want you to bless him today. And I feel this in my heart. Don't just give an offering. Give a blessing to a man of God who's here with us. So glad to have him. And I'm glad that we get the opportunity to minister to him as he ministers to us. And as he reaches people that we'll never know, that we'll never meet, and yet we'll have a part in because we give today. So as you give in the missions, if you want to write a check, make it out to Stratford Heights Church of God, and it'll all go to him. But as you give today, give knowing that it, it ministers all around the world, way far away from here. And that this is someone you can believe in. There's a lot out there you can't believe in. There's a lot of things out there that are questionable. And we're leery, and rightfully so. But blessing and giving to this missionary today is a sure, a sure work of God. And so we give to bless and honor him. Father, as we come to you, we thank you for the privilege for the honor, for the opportunity to be used today in this offering. I pray that you will bless it, Lord, to be a blessing. And I pray that you will bless those who are here that are giving, that, Lord, the work will continue and that it will not just be enough, but, Lord, to be more than enough. I praise you and I thank you for these people that are such givers, Lord. And I know, I know that you'll use us. So we thank you for this opportunity as well, those, Lord, who are prepared and ready to pay their tithes. I thank you for how they give today and how they continue to bless the work here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. She's out there on her own. A teenage boy in prison. Before he's even grown. The illness of a loved one. The widow no one calls. There is one solution. One answer for it all. Church that needs revival, a broken man and wife, but in the name of Jesus. 